Starting a nature journal can seem daunting. It's quite easy to get inspired by something you've seen online and then go down to the shops and buy a bunch of kit. Then you go home and open up to that first page and you just don't know where to start. Does that sound familiar? In this video, I'm going to share with the three things that I think are most important when starting a new nature journal. These three ideas come straight from my new course, How to Start a Nature Journal. And I'll be showing you the trailer for that course later in this video. This course launches on my website this weekend. I've put down in the description a discount code that lasts until the end of this month, that's May 2023, for a 10% discount on the new course. Or of course, at any time, you can go and watch this course and all of my courses over on Patreon if you choose to support me there. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's get into those three techniques to help you get started with your nature journal. Okay, hint number one, you only need a pencil and a sketchbook to start. I get it, there's nothing better than visiting your local art shop and coming away with a big bag of kit or getting a happy mail parcel full of your favourite art supplies. But if you want to start a nature journal and actually get going and integrate it into your life, it's easiest to just start simple. You really don't need to overcomplicate things. You need something to make marks with and something to make marks on. And that's just about it for starting a nature journal. So the reason for this is that if you've just got a pencil and paper, you're far less likely to just get distracted by your kit, you know, putting out paints, uh, messing around with colour, trying to find the right colour, fiddling with your drawings. That's because the reality of nature journaling is that you are learning to observe and to record what you observe. So these two things then, I like a really good quality sketchbook. My favorite are the Midori Cotton MD A5 sketchbooks for taking outside. That's really good quality cotton paper. For the pencil, a mechanical pencil is perfect because no sharpener is needed. By the way, you also don't need a rubber. You could use a pen if you prefer to stop you rubbing things out all the time, but to be honest, I find that a pencil will last longer on slightly wet paper in the rain than a pen will. I find that an HB pencil works best because I like to write as well as sketch, but this can vary according to what you prefer to do in your nature journal. With fewer distractions, you can work on what's really important, observing. Nature journaling is all about learning to observe and to record the things that you notice. Developing that skill of observing and recording works as a fantastic baseline from which to develop your artistic writing and identification skills. My number one piece of advice is just don't rush. Starting with a pencil and paper will set you up into a slow observation habit. If you want to know what to do with the pencil and sketchbook once you've got it, my online course, How to Start a Nature Journal, takes you through loads of prompts and exercises to get you started using that equipment. On to the second piece of advice then, which really follows on from the first. And it's embrace the process and love to learn. This might seem simple or perhaps a bit trite, but it's really my best advice for life, let alone nature journaling. In Zen Buddhism, there is a phrase, beginner's mind, which means coming at any activity with an, a mix of curiosity and interest rather than baggage and expectation. By taking up nature journaling, you're giving yourself an amazing opportunity to learn. You could learn how to paint or draw, how to write about nature, and how to identify the many things that you see in nature every day. If you come at it with the mentality of all I want to do is learn, then you're going to fly. On the other hand, if you come at it with this is a challenge that I must surmount or this is something that I must do by a certain time, then you're really setting yourself up for a disappointment. If every time you open your nature journal, it is to record what you've seen and learnt that day, then you're going to be creating a record of your progress. And you'll be able to look back at it in years to come and see the development of your skills, I can promise you that. That really leads to my final big tip, which is to nature journal in a way that actually fits in with your life as it is right now. It's really easy when starting a new hobby to kind of just fling yourself at it with gusto and really go for it, spending many, many hours on it until eventually you run out of energy and stop. Or perhaps you just go for it and you're spending loads of time doing it and it's feeling really, really good. But then the demands that you've, of the things that you've put aside in order to start kind of bundle up and catch up with you. And before you know it, you've had to stop to take care of the things that you neglected. Or perhaps mobility issues or location or whatever are getting in the way of what you think nature journaling is. So you think maybe I can't go on a great big hiking trip or I can't spend a ton of time outside. So this is obviously not for me. All of these examples have something in common. 
And what it is, is really a failure to find a style or a type of nature journaling that suits you and the way that you actually live your life in reality. Nature journaling is a personal activity. It doesn't really have any rules attached to it, especially in terms of the amount of time or the number of times that you need to visit your journal each day, week, or whatever. If you want to break it down, really there's, there's two extremes here. On one side, you've got loads and loads of time, which means you're going to learn the activity a lot faster. You're going to get better a lot quicker, but also you're more likely to burn out or get fed up and want to stop. On the other hand, you could have something that you barely ever do and you do it very, very occasionally and it's very easy to just sort of forget about it and not bother to do it anymore. So you've got to try and find somewhere in the middle that kind of fits with the way that you actually live your life. A balance needs to be struck and that's a balance that actually fits in with your own personal routines, your own personal lifestyle and your personality. Now, this topic has a full video lesson in my How to Start a Nature Journal online course. And that's because I just think that you need to find a way to fit nature journaling into your life in order to make it a kind of dependable habit that you could just keep on coming to time and time again. I hope that those three tips are helpful. There's loads more practical advice, exercises and prompts available in the online course itself. So are you interested in learning how to start a nature journal? Here's the video that I made all about the course. Hi, and welcome to How to Start a Nature Journal, a beginner's online course designed to get you started nature journaling confidently in no time at all. I'm Alex Boone. I've been nature journaling now for over six years, and I've produced a lot of different types of journal in that time. In this course, I'll be sharing some of those with you, plus my favorite tips to get you started nature journaling outdoors and indoors. In this course, you'll learn what nature journaling is and why it's important. You'll learn the art materials you need to start and the techniques for getting around fears such as not being good at art, writing or identification through fun and simple prompts that anyone can try. I also show you my favourite ways to start sketching using just the pencil some tips for writing about nature, both indoors and outdoors, and how to start identifying the wildlife that you see. Finally, I'll take you through some ideas for making nature journaling an enduring habit, an activity to go to when you need some relaxing, creative time in nature. The course contains eight lessons of between three and 10 minutes duration. It also has an accompanying 10 page illustrated digital guide, materials and reading list, and a transcript. Nature journaling is an amazing hobby a way for us to connect back into nature's rhythms at a time where the relationship between humans and nature is failing. David Attenborough famously said, no one will protect what they don't care about and no one will care about what they've never experienced. Nature journaling has a lot to offer us. Relaxation, meditation, creativity and fresh air are just a few examples. But nature journaling also helps us to notice nature's struggles and fight for our local areas and the plants and wildlife that we grow to love. This course represents your first step into a nurturing creative journey and an investment into your future relationship with nature. I really look forward to seeing you on the course. By the way, there's also a free community, the Nature Journaling Circle, which is attached to this and all my other courses. It's free to join and it's a great place to share your sketchbook and nature journal pages away from all of the likes and waiting of algorithms and social media. If you're interested in that, the link to that is in the description below, alongside the link to the course itself and to my Patreon. The Patreon is the place to go to see all my online courses first and also to support me to keep on creating more courses and free nature journaling content for YouTube too. I hope to see you in the course real soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.